Hello everyone! Thank you for watching our channel. We have already covered the amazing creatures that lived before the dinosaurs and the creatures that lived after their extinction. Today, we are finally going to talk about dinosaurs and the strangest and most amazing dinosaurs of all. Let's begin! Epidexeteryx 154 million years ago, the area where China is now located was home to one of the strangest dinosaurs ever, Epidexeteryx, which resembled no other creature on Earth. The creature was the size of a pigeon, and everything about it was unusual, from the length of its forelimbs to the shape of its teeth. The forests where Epidexeteryx lived at the time was home to many dangerous carnivorous dinosaurs and their small size made them vulnerable to attack. Fortunately, Epidexeteryx had a very useful ability. They could climb trees. This was a crucial factor in their survival. All the knowledge we have about Epidexeteryx comes from an amazing fossil that was first discovered in 2008. Fingers that could grasp branches and long, well-developed forelimbs suggested that they may have been dinosaurs very well adapted to life in trees. The strangely long, elongated third finger was another feature unique to Epidexeteryx. These fingers and protruding front teeth were the perfect tools for preying on insects on trees. One of Epidexeteryx's favorite prey was the larvae of longicorn beetles, and since they hide in the wood, the long middle finger served them well. On occasion, however, they had to fight among themselves over these tasty preys. When they lost, the long middle finger helped them express their anger without words. Researchers believe that the long tail feathers of Epidexeteryx may simply have been for display, to attract attention, or to intimidate. They were the first organisms in history to prove the existence of ornamental feathers. The name Epidexeteryx actually means ornamental feathers. They are the most bird-like of all the other dinosaurs. Unfortunately, however, Epidexeteryx's feathers were of no use at all in protecting it from carnivorous dinosaurs on the ground. Microraptor Microraptor was even more unusual than this. Microraptor was also able to climb trees and lived by preying on a variety of small animals, such as this flying lizard. Microraptor fossils were found in very good condition, which allowed us to elucidate its body structure in great detail. With well-developed claws and a body length of less than one meter, Microraptor was truly born to live and hunt amidst trees. However, the flying lizard had certain characteristics. They could fly. This would seem to have guaranteed their survival, but this was not the case. Microraptors also had the ability to fly. Their fossils clearly show that both their forelimbs and hind limbs had developed long feathers with a surface structure suitable for flight. All of these things clearly tell us that Microraptor was a four-winged, sky-dominating dinosaur. Cynornithosaurus In the Chinese forests where Microraptor lived, however, they were not the only flying dinosaurs. It was a close relative, Cynornithosaurus, which was larger than Microraptor. In the face of the true threat, the Cynornithosaurus, even the Microraptor transformed itself into a bird fleeing from hunters. They were both capable of flight. More precisely, they could glide through the forest by making a series of long, arc-like jumps. Microraptors, who also had longer, tertial feathers on their limbs, were able to fly far more smoothly through the air. But if they could not gain altitude, they had to descend to land. These long wings became a weakness, not a weapon on land. Microraptor could barely walk, let alone run, but Cynornithosaurus had no such problem, so on land, the tables were turned. The Microraptor, however, was as good as saved once it escaped to a tree. But that doesn't mean that Cynornithosaurus were always unable to find food, because it had a special ability that no other dinosaur had, a terrible secret. As a matter of fact, Cynornithosaurus was a poisonous dinosaur, it is hard to believe, but poisonous dinosaurs once inhabited this planet. 
Studies of the teeth of Sinornithosaurus have shown that they had special grooves running throughout their teeth, like those of Heloderma suspectum, through which they poured venom into the bodies of their prey. Additionally, the researchers found a blank space above the venom fangs and noted that this may have been where the venom pouches or venom glands were located. This means that Sinornithosaurus was a venomous dinosaur that could also fly, which is why they are one of the most extraordinary creatures in history. The Sinornithosaurus was an extremely dangerous carnivorous dinosaur that could have killed anyone who underestimated it. Sinosauroteryx By the way, Sinornithosaurus turned out to be one of the earliest feathered dinosaurs discovered, the earliest of which was discovered in 1996. This proved a direct link between dinosaurs and birds, which had been speculated for a long time. Although some species of feathered dinosaurs were capable of flight, the sky was still dominated by something else. The flying reptiles, the pterosaurs. Tapajara Among the numerous species, Tapajara was unusual and different from the others. The large mohawk-like crest on its head, like a punk rocker's mohawk, is believed to have possibly been a kind of motion sensor. It caught any air vibrations and transmitted the information to its internal ears, which acted like a gyroscope. The crown was also a sensor as well as a steering device, which allowed the tapajara to move agilely in the air. Some researchers believe that tapajara could not only fly, but also swim on the surface of the sea, with the crest acting as a jib and the two wings as main sails. The use of these three sails allowed Tapajara to swim very fast. To give you a recent example, swans and ducks also spread their wings occasionally and fly in a similar manner, catching the wind. Stegosaurus and Camptosaurus One of the most unusual looking dinosaurs is the famous Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus had tremendous plates on its back, the purpose of which is still hypothetical. It is possible that they were used to regulate body temperature, to intimidate carnivorous dinosaurs, for courtship, or a combination of all of these functions at once. It is noteworthy that Stegosaurus fossils are almost always found along with those of Camptosaurus. The researchers thought that they may have lived together in a mutually beneficial cooperative relationship that kept them from being destroyed by other dangerous carnivorous dinosaurs. Stegosaurus was a heavily armored tank-like dinosaur with a deadly weapon at the end of its tail known as a thagomizer. The Camptosaurus was much smaller and, unlike the Stegosaurus, had no conspicuous means of self-defense. Camptosaurus instead had large eyes and a very large, well-developed brain for its body. This, according to researchers, may have allowed them to serve as patrols next to the sturdily equipped Stegosaurus, which carried the power load. Thus, by forming groups of different species of dinosaurs, they improved their chances of survival in a world of constant danger. I can't get into it anymore, so would like to break it up here. Thank you all for watching. If you are wondering who is the enemy that this dinosaur duo had to defend themselves against, please be sure to watch next. We promise to bring it to you as soon as possible. That's all for today. Please be a good boy and girl to wait for me. Farewell.